point to remember is uracil and adenine form a double hydrogen bond here. Color code it. When you see a one ring member here, the way I remember it too, <laughs> the longer the name, the shorter it is. So there's purine pyrimidine. If it's one ring, pyrimidine. If it's a double ring like adenine, it's a purine. So I just take what makes sense and turn it around for the naming scheme. Again, if an OH is on there, it's ribonucleic acid. Take away the OH, deoxyribonucleic acid. So what this comes into play is when you're double stranded, see one's going up, one's going down. When they're able to squeeze in inside or wrap around a histone in your chromosomes, this OH will have an influence on the packing of it. So RNA is what comes out of the nuclear membrane into the cytosol now, they call it. The ribosome picks up the RNA, reads it to translate the codons that we just saw. Three of these bases code for amino acids. The color coding on this, I want kids to draw ribose, five-membered ring, phosphates are the backbones holding this together, but the nucleic acid is held on one side of the ribose. That's why I say he's holding nucleic acid and he's picking or kicking the phosphates. Phospho flowers, I call them, phosphate flowers. So there's three parts of DNA, the nucleic acid, the ribose sugar, the phosphate. So if uracil is going to bond to adenine, double, amine, double hydrogen bond here, you need an oxygen with the right space. A nitrogen here is going to give the plus. Now, watch your next one here. Go up to here. here. Triple hydrogen bonds. Oxygen, because oxygen will usually always be providing electrons. This nitrogen plus, this nitrogen plus. So the oxygen here donating electrons. But look at this nitrogen. This is a nitrogen to nitrogen hydrogen bond. One nitrogen is providing the pair of electrons. The other proton is what's going to do the band. I remember they called it the proton dance. These protons are actually bouncing in between pairs of electrons. But to make this simpler, I show how the pair of electrons here is creating a cup for the proton to fit into. So the proton fits, proton fits. Up here, the proton fits that way. But this is a major difference. The nitrogen here is providing the pair of electrons. This nitrogen here is providing the proton for the hydrogen bond. So you hear things like, oh, T and A and C and G bond together, or U and A instead of C when it's, well, how is it going to, if you have a double hydrogen bond, it's going to come up to the triple hydrogen bond. It's just not going to fit. So it's, yes, it's magical that it turns out that way, but there's a logical reason for it too. So T and A, C and G, these guanine, is going to prefer and almost always be bound to a cytosine. Triple hydrogen bond. So if we color code these, you'll see that Ricky ribose, who I usually would, you can make him the blue or he could be the green. So the double and the single. One's a boy. One's a girl. So if you think the boy and the girl's going out together, this is back and it's upside down. So we're looking at the back of his blue mohawk here, okay, for your soon. Over here, she's got her curly red hair. We'll get a closer look at this in a minute. So again, adenine, thymine, or uracil, 
cytosine, guanine, TNA, C, and G. This is why they bond together like that. Let's see what else we have here for urine join them. Maybe we'll zoom in on some of this. See if the focus will hold. Is focus going to hold on that? So again, this is fascinating stuff. How a nitrogen can provide the electron pair for a hydrogen bond. And this nitrogen on the single membered ring of cytosine can provide the electron pair for a hydrogen bond. But the proton in between is on the guanine is what you would call a hydrogen, but you got to remember a hydrogen is a proton and an electron. So if it's bound, there's going to be a pair of electrons holding it. So the hydrogen bond I prefer to call a proton bond because it's the proton in between these pairs of electrons that actually creates the bond that holds your DNA bases together. So even though it's considered a weak bond compared to a covalent bond, it's strong enough to hold your B DNA base pairs together. And remember, one is going up and one is going down. So they're opposite strands. That's why I don't like when they're drawn because they'll draw the letters. See, I got these upside down and I got this backwards. For once, if you get it backwards, you get it right. So let's take a little bit closer look here. sideways here. Yeah, we got typos everywhere. Now we'll move on. This is where we're going to start. This is the chart of the nuclides. Let's see if this is bigger, a little bit higher. I'm not going to mess with it. When we look at abundances of elements, hydrogen being the starting point, hydrogen, helium, there's a thing called the chart of the nuclides. It lists all the isotopes. Isotopes, number of protons, is what determines the name of an element. So one proton, it's hydrogen. Doesn't matter if it's got no neutrons, one neutron, two neutrons, it's hydrogen. Two protons becomes helium. Two protons with one neutron, still helium. Helium-3, they call it. Helium-4 is the alpha particle. That is what the end product of the sun and most stars to liberate the most energy. Helium alpha particle. Now, the triple alpha particle process, triple three alphas coming together, make the carbon-12. The beryllium, two alphas together is a sticks together for like a second so it takes you got to have another alpha hit it right away to make carbon 12. Now carbon 12 will be stable and you got a picture that's happening in the core of a lot of stars. Big Betelgeuse for example 100 million degrees 10 times as hot in the core as our sun is able to fuse three heliums. So the three helium alphas as we'll start to call them now because there's no electrons on them. When the electrons are on, that's when it's called an element. Remember, chemistry is the electrons and bonding. So if there's no electrons, we're talking bare nuclei, there's other names for it. Deuterium is hydrogen, one proton, one neutron with the electron. Deuteron, if you're shooting particles, there's no electron involved, so it's called a deuteron. Well, the alpha particle now, three... Helium alphas make the carbon-12. Another alpha is going to hit it to make oxygen-16. Another alpha is going to hit to make the neon. But what I'm showing here are trends that are happening.